Hi everyone, it's Miranda, and today the drug I'm going to be giving you education on is lisinopril. So, what drug class is lisinopril? Lisinopril is an antihypertensive or ACE inhibitor. And we know that ACE inhibitors are used, they're a long acting, um, lisinopril is a long acting ACE inhibitor, and it prevents the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So this is a potent, which angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor. So decreased angiotensin 2 leads to decreased vasopressor activity and decreased aldosterone secretion. Sorry, my dog's coming to join me. So what are some brand names of lisinopril? There is Prinavil, Cubrelis, and Zestrel. How do we educate our patients to take this drug? This drug comes in mostly tablet forms, but it can also be suspended into an oral solution. Um, the tablets come in 2.5, 5 milligram, 10 milligram, 20 milligram, 30, and 40 milligram. And this can be given with or without food. However, if the medication is suspended, the patient can... Um, Keep the medication at room temperature, just making sure um, it doesn't, it isn't stored above 77 degrees. It is good for up to four weeks, and you're going to educate the patient to make sure that you shake it well before you use it. So why do we administer this drug? Well, for obvious reasons, hypertension. Um, if they're having high blood pressure, this is a drug that they're going to use. It's also used for acute MIs. So IBM Micromedics states that um, at 24 hours, uh, within 24 hours of an MI, for two days, you're gonna give five milligrams orally um, once a day. And then you're gonna give, they're gonna have 10 milligram once a day for at least six weeks. It's also given for um, migraines, which it depends on why they're, they're having migraines, if they're going to get this medication. It's also used with heart failure medications, um, kidney disease, and then also diabetic neuropathy. What are some adverse effects of this drug? So with this being an antihypertensive drug, there is obviously the risk of hypotension. Um, that is definitely one thing that as a nurse you're going to want to monitor when administering this drug to a patient and maybe they've never had it before. You're going to want to make sure you're monitoring their vitals and making sure they're not getting below that hypotensive range. Um, and hyperkalemia is a huge one. So this is important to educate your patients that they're not taking in any more or excess amounts of potassium into their diets because this medication can cause um, hyper, hyperkalemia. A dry non-productive cough is a huge one. That is definitely something you wanna educate your patients on when they start this drug, that it can cause that and it typically does go away. And then of course your nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and sometimes constipation. So when do we call the doctor? Along with some of the things I just mentioned as the adverse effects, um, the, the non-productive cough that these patients get, if this cough does not go away, they definitely need to call their doctor. Signs and symptoms of hypotension. So educating our patients on what are the signs and symptoms of hypotension. So that's feeling very dizzy or have you know having spells where they're passing out. Um, and signs and symptoms of allergic reaction. Most people are pretty aware of what an allergic reaction looks like, but just reiterating, you know, if there's a rash or hives itching, it's swollen, trouble breathing, tightness in the chest, and um, or peeling skin with without a fever. Um, and then also if they're unable to urinate. So sometimes this can be deadly um, and I'm sorry, liver problems are also common with this. Um, so you want to call, they want to call their doctor if they're having signs and symptoms of um, liver problems such as dark urine. Um, so if they're unable to urinate or if their urine is dark, that is definitely something that they need to let their doctor know. And that is all I've got.